Today we're going to use prime factorization to find the lowest common multiple, the highest common factor, and then also square roots and cube roots. Now, let's start with lowest common multiple and highest common factor. You actually already know some methods for doing this, right? If you're asked to find the lowest common multiple of two numbers, you can write out all the multiples of each of the numbers and then choose the lowest, the smallest of those multiples that they have in common. And to find the highest common factor, you can write out all the factors of each of the numbers and then choose the greatest of those factors that they have in common. But if you end up having some really big numbers, it's going to take you an awfully long time to write out all the factors or to write out enough multiples where you end up seeing what they have in common. And so using prime factorization can be very, very helpful in this case. So we're going to aim at looking at the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple of 56 and 84. But first we need to get them written as prime factors. So I want you to pause the video now and do this in your homework books. Write 56 as a product of prime factors and then write 84 as a product of prime factors. Pause the video and do that now. Okay, hopefully you are very familiar with this. You might have done it in a slightly different way, doesn't matter, but you'll get the same answer. 56 I know immediately is 8 times 7. 7 to prime so I can circle it. 8 is 2 times 4, that's a prime, and 4 is 2 times 2. So I can then say that 56 is equal to 2 cubed times 7. And that's it written as a product of prime factors. Now let's have a look at 84. Well, I know that 84 is just 7 times 12. That's a simple way to start. That's a prime number. 12 is 4 times 3. Well, that's a prime number. And 4 is 2 times 2. And those are both primes. So 84, written as a product of primes, is 2 squared. Oh, no, not 2 cubed. 2 squared times 3 times 7. And this is what we're now going to use. OK, let's have a look at how we can use this now to find the lowest common multiple and highest common factor. So what we have from the previous work is that we know 56 written as a product of prime factors is 2 cubed times 7 and 84 is 2 squared times 3 times 7. Now to find the lowest common multiple let's think about what we're doing. We want something that is a multiple of 56 and it's also a multiple of 84. So it must have everything that's in 56, because it's a multiple of 56, and it also must have everything that's in 84. So we take all of the primes that we can see. So let's have a look. In 56 and 84, the, all the primes we can see, well, there's 2s, there are 3s, and there are 7s. That's what's in all of them. And we want to take the highest power of each so that we have, we make sure that we've got everything that was in 56 and we've got everything that was in 84. So let's have a look at our 2. The highest power of 2 that we have is 2 cubed. So we must have 2 cubed in the lowest common multiple. Then for the 3, well, there's only 1, 3, so we just leave that as 1, 3. And what's the highest power of 7 that we have? It's also only just one of them, so we have 7. So the lowest common multiple is 2 cubed times 3 times 7. Write this into your homework books and work out what the answer is. Okay, so 2 cubed times 3 times 7, you should have worked out, is 168. That's the lowest common multiple of 56 and 84. How do we do the highest common factor? Well, remember, for the highest common factor, what we want is we want the stuff that divides into 56 and also divides into 84. We want the number, the biggest number, that can divide into 56 as well as into 84. 
So we must only take stuff that's in both of them. Otherwise, it won't divide into both of them. So we can only choose the primes that exist in both. So 2 is a prime that exists in both of them. So we can take a 2. 3 doesn't exist in both, so we mustn't take it. 7 does exist in both, so we must take it. Now we look at what power of each must we take. Because it has to be in both of them, we choose the lowest power. And so for 2, the lowest power that we have, well, we've got a 2 cubed, but here we've only got a 2 squared, so we must take the lower one, 2 squared. 7, it's just 7 to the power of 1 in both of them, so that's what we take. And so what we get, well, you work that out and write it in your homework books quickly. Okay, you get 4 times by 7, that's 28. So the highest common factor of 56 and 84 is 28. So let's just quickly recap. To use this method to find the highest common factor and lowest common multiple, what do we do? You first need to get your prime factorization. For the lowest common multiple, you take the primes that all the primes that you can see in these lists and you take the highest power of each of those primes. So it's funny, I mean, the way I remember it for myself is to, it's almost opposite, right? I'm looking for the lowest common multiple, but in fact, I take as much as I can. I take all the primes I can see and I take the highest power of those primes that I can see. And then the opposite happens when I look for the highest common factor. When I'm looking for the highest common factor, I almost take as little as possible, right? What I do is I only take the primes that are in both of the numbers, and I take the lowest power of each. We can also use prime factorization to help us find square roots and cube roots. Let's imagine we wanted to find out the square root of 4, 4, 1. You probably don't know how to, you don't know the answer to that immediately. And what we're going to do is we're going to use prime factorization to help us. So the first thing we need to do is to write 4, 4, 1 as a product of prime factors. Okay, so 3 will go into 4, 4, 1. So 3 goes into 4 once, remainder 1 into there. 3 goes into 14, 4 times, remainder 2. And 3 goes into 21, 7 times. That's your prime number. Okay, 1, 4, 7. That again can be divided by 3. Uh, 3 goes into 14, 4 times, remainder 2. And 3 goes into 27, 9 times. And 49, well, we should know immediately that's just 7 times 7, and those are both primes. So, to write 4, 4, 1 as a product of primes, what we've got is we've got 3 times 3 times 7 times 7. Now, when we're asking for the square root, we're asking what number multiplied by itself will give us 4, 4, 1. Can you see what we've got here is we've got a 3 and a 7, and we've got another 3 and a 7. So what we've actually got here, when we think about it, what's 4, 4, 1? It's just 21 times 21. And that product of prime factors helped us to see that. And so what is the square root of 441? It's just 21.